Good evening. I'd like to welcome all of you, family members, parents, and graduating eighth graders to tonight's baccalaureate mass and graduation ceremony. surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, 
If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways, Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Teach, teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, Lord. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy. Toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him, and his covenant instructs them. Teach me your ways, Lord.
Dear St. Anthony students, uh, congratulations. And although this situation is not ideal, and in fact, it's a bit awkward, I was trying to lead the people here who are all distanced and there's only a few of us, so it, it's, it's strange celebrating the Mass this way when we all know we, we should all be here together, when our hearts long to have that community and that communion, specifically in this celebration that draws us all together in the love of God, in the heart of Christ Jesus. And at the same time, even virtually, by the grace of God, here we are all drawn together. And God works through these situations to draw us on even deeper into our relationship with one another, especially through the trials and struggles that we're experiencing today. And all of you making this transition you know not what the future has in store. You have some ideas, and perhaps you have plans for your future. But I say to you, you know not what God has in store. And as you cooperate with his plan, he will reveal to you a plan much greater than you could ever imagine, especially as you hold fast to the truth that has been handed on to you, to the seeds that have been planted in your hearts here at St. Anthony's. And most of you, as you've been recalling your years here at St. Anthony, you may have remembered a lesson or two from your teachers. But more, you remember those encounters. You remember the love that has been shared with you. And that's what informs everything going forward. St. Paul says the love of Christ has been poured into our hearts. And St. Anthony's School has been a place where you have received much. It's there. And so pay attention to the parable we heard today in our gospel. Jesus has been sowing those seeds. He just throws them out there, right? It, it lands on the rocky ground. It lands in the bushes and the thorns on the hard pavement. What kind of heart have you given to the Lord? How have those seeds been received in your soul? The Lord, who is our greatest teacher, wants to come in and start to fertilize those seeds as you go out and start to find the way, establishing your presence in the world as a beloved son and the beloved daughter of our Heavenly Father, holding fast to those truths that have been handed on to you. And this is why St. Paul, in, at the end of our first reading, he, he encourages us to hold fast to whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Because in these days, how easy is it to focus on all the negative? And as we watch what's going on around us, to be filled with anxiety. And as we heard in the gospel, it's that fear and anxiety, those thorn bushes that then choke out the life of God that's been planted in our hearts. 
even in the midst of our trials and struggles, as we focus on the good, the true, and the beautiful, it's then that our lives shine in the midst of the trial and the darkness. It's then that our souls grow. And others, as they see what you have, They'll be wondering, where did she get that? And you can witness to them. You can be for them a witness of Christ's love, that love that's been poured into your heart. You can share with them the stories about your encounters with your friends, with your teachers, with those situations that have made a lasting impact in your lives. Hold on to these things. And as your hearts rejoice tonight for having made it to the end, for having graduated from St. Anthony School and looking forward to the bright future that God has in store for you, I want to echo again these words from St. Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So pray. Thank the Lord for all the blessings that he has given you. And it's from that thanksgiving and through that prayer that we grow, that those seeds start to bear fruit. And little by little, we come to realize more and more who God created us to be. Let your lives be rooted in Christ, in his gospel, so that they may bear much fruit. Please stand and let us pray. For our Pope, for all church leaders, and for our priests, Father Schramm, Father Basil, Father White, and Father Coyne, may they find constant strength and be inspired by the loving example of your Son, who gave power to the powerless and dignity to those who felt worthiness. Worthless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents and guardians, through whose love and care we came to know the extent of your love and care for us, bless them always and keep them close in your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children of the school community, may they continue to share and live God's message of hope wherever they are. May they always value the gifts of friendship, care, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our principal, Michael Cantu, teachers and school staff, may they always follow Jesus' example as a teacher. And may we always be grateful for their guidance and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who are sick, may they be healed and may they be com comforted by the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have passed away, may they share in the joy of God's kingdom. 
We thank you for the wonderful years and memories we shared with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we always remember to express our gratitude to our parents for all they have done for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice between and among our country and all other nations. May we respect all peoples and nations and that our country and all nations respect the right and dignity of each individual. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Entrusting all of our prayers to the loving hands of Our Lady of Seattle, we pray. Holy Mary, we come before you as spiritual children in great need, seeking your intercession and asking that your mantle of love surround us to console, protect, and lead us to your Son, Jesus. We entrust all of God's family, especially the church in Western Washington, into your immaculate hands. With your Son, Jesus' gentle power, you can undo any knot in our church and in the lives of believers who entrust themselves to your care. Today, we especially entrust to you all those who are suffering from the coronavirus all those who have been impacted by this pandemic, who have no job, food, or home. We pray in a special way for healing in our hearts, in our families, and in our country. And we ask that through your intercession, and that of St. James, our guardian angels, and the faithful in our diocese, we may be free from every spiritual and temporal ill and be safely led to encounter your Son's merciful, sacred heart. Our Lady of Seattle, undoer of knots, pray for us.
so that through him, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name may be exalted among all the nations, and in every place a single offering may be presented to your majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross, brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. So, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, be humbly implored. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, 
and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your real life. Yes, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anthony of Heavenly Patron, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis of Pope and all our bishops, the order of the bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, are they passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. That we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ's servant, Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and all the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Graduates, you will leave St. Anthony's School with confidence in yourselves and the belief that you each have many God-given dreams yet to fulfill. We ask that you promise your parents and guardians, your teachers, and the parish communities of St. Anthony, St. Stephen the Martyr, and St. John the Baptist, that you will always do your best as you try to live by the values which you have learned at home and in school. You make this promise in the presence of God. I encourage you to, to, to make that promise to God yourselves to always as it says here always do your best and try to live by those values the values that have been taught to you those seeds 
that have been placed in your heart. And let that be your prayer every day to do the best you can. And those seeds will bear much fruit. On behalf of Father Basil, Father Ed White, Father Jim Coyne, congratulations. Your priests are proud of you and will do all that we can to help you every step of the way. Always remember, you can come to your priest, you can come to your pastor and have someone to listen, someone to encourage you, someone to help you to become that man, that woman that God is calling you to be. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. We give thanks to God for the gift that you have been to our school community. May you treasure your gifts and talents and use them well for your own good and the good of all whom you meet. May you know God's great love for you and always believe and trust that he has a great plan for you. May you always treasure the gift of faith and continue to grow in friendship with Jesus. May God bless you as you set out on the next part of your journey in life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For all of you parents and guardians, we thank God for the gifts which you have shared with your children and the school community. May you faithfully live your vocation to guide your children through life. May you know that God is always present with you in your task of parenting. May you be given strength and courage as you help your children to open up their boundless, God-given gifts and talents. May God bless you in all that you do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God pour out his blessing upon all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
And I know graduating through a screen isn't anyone's ideal way of graduating. But right now isn't the time to complain. Today is our day. We're about to enter a whole new chapter in our lives. We worked hard to reach this very moment, so let's not let today's adversity get in our way. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the families and the junior high teachers on behalf of this year's graduating class. Because of your constant support, love, and push to achieve greater things, we're prepared for high school and beyond, knowing that you'll be there to support us. To the teachers, thank you for putting in all of your time, energy, and efforts toward the benefit of our future and well-being as well as putting up with our chaos and quite interesting personalities, especially in a day, which I know from experience. Each one of you has helped us develop as a person and has encouraged us to speak up and rise as great individuals. Without your help, guidance, and instruction on how to use our voices, I wouldn't be up here speaking to you today. And to the parents, we owe everything to you, and thank you for sending us to St. Anthony's and being by our side throughout everything. You've been our role model since day one, and have stood by our sides since the very beginning and through all of our ups and downs. Thank you for the infinite hours you've spent caring for us, helping us with schoolwork, even at the very last minute before the due date, driving us to school, sports, dances, birthday parties, malls, and a million other things. All in all, said simply, thank you, Mrs. Wallace, thank you, Mr. Pennington, thank you, Mr. Ramos, thank you, Mrs. White, thank you to all St. Anthony staff, and thank you to our amazing parents and family. Class of 2020, look how far we've come. Let's remember the times we've had so far and the obstacles we've had to face. 2020 brought us a year full of devastation and loss. Australia caught on fire, we lost the basketball greats, Kobe and Kiki Bryant, and last but definitely not least, the coronavirus. The thing that took what we know as normal away. COVID-19 took our ability to physically experience church here the mass here at church, the ability to go to school, and the ability to create our last memories at St. Anthony. But through all of this, using what we've been taught at St. Anthony's, we were able to adapt, to create a new normal, and to finish strong and graduate unlike any other class has done before, ever. We choose to remember the many happy memories we've made already throughout the year, such as meeting our kindergarten buddies for the first time, rapping about history to Spongebob music, spilling tea during team time, and simply being the leaders of this awesome school. These memories make up for the times we've recently missed. The friendships we've created have stayed strong through this awkward time as we've gone from sitting in the classroom, writing on paper, to sitting in our own homes, staring at our computer screens. Yet we still finish the chapter. We finish the assignments. We still gain the knowledge that we need. The teachers have trained us to understand that there's an opportunity to learn every day, no matter where you are, and we've proved that. As I wrap up this speech, I want us to look back at this year as a year full of accomplishment, which we all should be proud of and celebrate. As we go our separate ways, we get the chance to be whatever we want and to accomplish whatever we want. Today's current events tell us that silence is not a voice. So let's be loud and be the leaders we are. The journey to becoming leaders and the voice of the future starts now. It's our vision. And you know, it's fitting that we're the class of 2020, because you know what they say, perfect vision is 2020. Congrats, class of 2020, we made it. Please stand for a reading from the Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get to the part of the ceremony where graduates receive their diplomas, we want to announce some outside school scholarship award winners. Holy Names is pleased to award the principal scholarship to Claire Murphy and the trustee scholarship to Ava Javier. Patrick Dunn has also been awarded the Kennedy Scott Cambronero Scholarship for Band. Now we have come to the point in the ceremony where our graduates will receive their diploma. I would now like to invite Mr. Ramos up. Mr. Ramos will be calling each graduate's name to recognize them for their academic times at St. Anthony's. Mr. Cantu will be delivering the diplomas to each of you in the next couple days. Jadrian Agana. Michelle Arjona Reyes. Lourdes Therese Castillo Avis. Liana Joy Bravam Bautista. Claire Elizabeth Baxter. Mara Genevieve Brennan. Chase Chihan Brokenbrook. Catherine Margaret DeRuder. Patrick Francis Farrell Dunn. Megan Hannah Ebalo. Sienna Lynn Evangelista. Renzi Ken Lynn Fernandez. Ionette Getsemane Fuerte Casanova. Pilar Nina Isabella Galdamez. Valerie Michelle Fernandez Barajas. Ava Roselle Colonzo Javier. Blake William Johnson. Sagan Yergal Caleb. Mary Elizabeth. Paul, Jacob Tomas Coombs, Aiden Lee, Vicente Javier Lopez Jacobs, Angela Trey Mendoza, Claire Margaret Murphy, Angelina Pearl Newton, Brooklyn Tanha Wynn, Vivi Wynn, Ethan Eugene Ogilvy, Riley 
Alexander Otley. Henry Dewey Pham. Nicholas Theo Rack. Lucas Manuel Eves Rodriguez. Versabel Desta Seifu. Sydney Viken Suarez. Hui Dang Tran. Kaylin Vu. Carly Ann Whalen. Aaron Kathleen Widmer. Elijah Zebulon Vignayu Wu. Nicolette Anastasia Young. It is my honor and pleasure to celebrate with the community these fine young people. Tomorrow and Friday I'll be delivering your diplomas. For nine years, you students have been a part of our school. Graduates, we do believe that you have the skill set for continued growth, and I encourage you to consider Father Jack's um, message to you, that you should always remember to be examples of a follower of Christ, so that others might look to you and wonder just what Jesus is all about. And by your example, you can encourage that growth in their faith life. We expect to hear about you and your continued growth as you age in grace and wisdom and as you grow toward adulthood. Now to close this evening's program, I would like to introduce Vincente Lopez Jacobs, who will deliver the farewell address. Vincente. Today is the day that we look back on our times as students of St. Anthony School. We are now closing this chapter of our lives and turning the page into another. Our teachers have been incredibly supportive and have prepared us for our future and the challenges we will face in and out of the classroom. These past two years of junior high have been our final test of what high school will be like. Walkers, different classes with different teachers, and working in our community and school. This year has been an experience that I believe we will never forget. We have begun to understand the importance of supporting those in need and fighting for good. This year was a year of adapting, trying to find a balance between our responsibilities and find a place that we can call home for the next four years. As eighth graders, we have been on the top of leadership in our school and have understood the stress of maintaining that sort of image. But even with all these achievements, we couldn't have done it without the devotion of all our teachers. I hope that we have all learned large amounts of material and have begun to know what we can do as individuals. Each teacher has helped us to grow in our understanding of the world and what we can achieve. Mrs. White has helped us to learn how to write in many different forms and how to do many different projects. Mrs. Wallace has given us hands-on learning and taught us all the different sciences through Bill Nye and detailed lessons. Mr. Pennington has helped us learn thousands of math equations and the importance of patience and critical thinking. Mr. Robbins has showed us how to support real-world events and how to write the perfect essay. But these are only a speck of things that they have done for us, and I cannot thank them enough. In the words of Albert Einstein, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. And I truly pray that I will not be the only person to see these incredible men and women again. One thing that has truly helped me to get through tough times is with the friendships that I've had with many different classmates. Even though there are groups that we go to more, 
it is still good to see that we are open-minded and wanting to learn from other peers. We have also had plenty of positive experiences, from getting McDonald's after our trip to Olympia, me being roasted by Mr. Ramos, and the absolute hype during every dance. This year has been a truly important year for all of us. We have needed to learn how to balance our responsibilities and worry over the responses of high schools. We have also needed to put in the hours each day in order to receive great grades. But as we continue to go on and understand that these victories can only lead to more. God has given us the Holy Spirit, which has been a spiritual guide for all of us, and has pointed us in the direction that God wants us to take. And for as long as I know, God has shown love into every single one of us. St. Anthony has been a home for all of us, and has been an important part in our lives. We must all focus on the positive experiences we have had here and keep them close to our hearts. High school will be a time where we will use the skills that we have learned and use them with people that we know now and many that we don't. We should all be blessed that our parents, teacher, and staff have given us incredible opportunities that can help us to change the world for the better. This time in this quarantine has been tough for all of us, but this is only one of the small things that we will do to help our planet. I truly hope that everyone here can choose a path they can believe in and will enjoy. Let us try to stay connected in the years to come, remember each other for who we were. My advice is to never lose sight of what you can achieve and always do what you can to reach those goals. Remember that it is always possible to turn the tiniest piece of coal into a beautiful sparkling diamond. God will always be by our sides through the good and bad. He is the one that wants us to make positive decisions, especially the ones that will help those around us. But we will never forget St. Anthony remember the great things that we have achieved here. All of us have had some defeats, but we have picked ourselves up and tried again. But today is a day that we have succeeded, and something that we should all be proud of. Congratulations to all my fellow students of the class of 2020, and I believe that we will all achieve great things.